Welcome to our design day video. We are team 22066 and our sponsor is Raytheon Technologies. We will begin our video with a brief introduction and description of our design. To begin, Raytheon Technologies would like an onboard recording device that is capable of detecting, measuring, and recording changes in temperature, vibration, and shock via two 3-axis accelerometers and a temperature sensor. This device needs to be small and cylindrical in shape, and also strong enough to withstand multiple uses in extreme conditions. Additionally, the recording device will be battery powered and have an input-output feature for accessing recorded data. Some of the core functional requirements of the system are that the device needs to record data for five consecutive minutes and survive and detect a range of temperatures from negative 40 to 85 degrees Celsius. The device must also record shock up to 2,000 Gs and survive an impact of 5,000 Gs. Additionally, the recording device must be resistant to dust and water and allow the user to access the data by ejecting an internal SD card. Because of our size constraint, we knew from the beginning we would need to provide as much space as possible inside our shelf for the electronic assembly. We started with three initial designs that used different ideas to create space inside of the shelf. Our first design used two halves of a cylindrical shell with a cap on one end. The circuit boards would be attached to each half of the cylindrical portion and then the end cap could be installed as the last step. This would be one of the easier designs to machine. However, much harder to waterproof and the electrical components would need to be assembled after installed to the recording device. Our second design used a two piece shield with a internal frame or what we like to call it a chassis. This de design is much harder to machine due to the awkward geometry of the smaller portion of the shell and difficult to waterproof due to the arrangement of the faces our third design uses a cylindrical outer shell with an end cap. We determined that this option would be the easiest to machine and waterproof due to the connecting face being on a single plane between the shell and the cap. It also uses a chassis which allows the electrical components to be installed before placing them inside of the recording device. Our team decided to use the third design as shown here. The constraints of our project led to many changes in our electrical design. We knew our electrical design had to have very small, durable components with lots of contacts, and this necessitated the use of a PCB to simplify manufacturing and ensure durability. Originally, we thought we could get away with a single PCB. Given our small size constraints, we opted with a circuit card assembly to better use our available volume. The electrical team got very comfortable with using Eagle ECAD to lay out and design the entirety of the CCA. We used our our knowledge from CDE1 to lay out the pinouts to our microcontroller and expanded the design from there. We met with double mentors from Raytheon to validate our revisions and learn better practices. It took us around 22 revisions to dial in all the sizing and fix most of the problems we found on both boards. Because of the supply chain issues, we were not able to test prototypes. This challenged the team to come up with our best design without the ability to learn from and make revisions after testing said prototypes. Our final design calls for two double-sided, four-layer PCBs, 33 by 21.9 millimeters in size. Our final component list includes the AT Mega 2560 microcontroller, the micro SD for data storage, the TMP512 temperature sensor, one 500G and one 2000G Amtel 830M1 accelerometer, a power indicator LED, as well as all the coupling capacitors, pull-up resistors, logic level shifter, and voltage regulators to run everything else smoothly. Two power supply contacts connect the CCA to the battery, and two header pin connectors at the top and bottom of both boards bridge connections between them. Both boards have power and ground planes, and the components are spaced to minimize noise. Each board mounts accelerometer side into the chassis, 
and the design allows the SD card to be accessible when the cap is removed, and the window in the cap provides a view of the power status LED when the cap is installed. For Critical Design Element 1, we decided to make a prototype of our final circuit. In this diagram, looking left to right, we can see an SD card reader, two accelerometers, and a temperature sensor. One of the requirements of our recording device was that it was able to record up to 2,000 Gs of acceleration that a unit under test would experience. When we were first looking into possible high G accelerometers, we noticed that the sensitivity decreased as the acceleration went lower. In order to minimize noise and error, we decided early on that we would use two accelerometers, one that measures lower accelerations and one that can measure high accelerations. The two accelerometers in our system are able to measure up to 500 and 2000 Gs. For our prototype circuit, we wanted to make sure that we would accurately measure and record accelerations from the two accelerometers in our breadboard circuit, as well as verify that we are able to write to the SD card. We use the Arduino ATmega2560 development board since our final circuit uses the ATmega2560 chip to communicate with the onboard sensors. Also, the communication protocols of the sensors that we used in the critical design prototype circuit are the same as the ones we are using in the final circuit. They are the Serial Peripheral Interface, or SPI protocol, and the Inter-Integrated Circuit Protocol, otherwise known as I2C. We use this code as a basis for our code that will be written to our main circuit in the final prototype. We set a range for each accelerometer in our code and used a stripped fan motor to induce acceleration. We then checked our text file after the test had been completed and verified that the accelerometers were switching. We verified the measured data with an Apple Watch that was also mounted on the fan. One of the most important requirements for the system is that it can withstand up to 5,000 Gs of force. By not meeting this requirement, the unit could be destroyed upon impact and lose all of the data recorded. To help determine if the system is strong enough, we developed a pneumatic cannon powered by an air compressor. It works with a moving piston on the inside of the cannon and a chamber to hold all of the compressed air. The unit is loaded into the front through the barrel and can be launched using a ball valve on the end. This device could launch our unit using up to around 150 PSI. By using analysis and mathematics, it was determined that the system would need to be launched at 3.5 PSI and impact on a solid surface to endure the force of up to 5,000 Gs. Completing multiple tests, we found that the system did in fact survive in this environment. With multiple iterations of the unit made, we pushed our limit to see how far it could go. We completed a launch of 20 PSI and saw the device break at the cap. The screws were what broke, with the device just having a few scratches on the outside. With more tests of up to 110 PSI, we saw the shell of the unit endure thicker scratches and dents, but no major deformation. By completing this important test, we could determine that our unit would indeed pass the force requirement.